In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Lamy Safari Fountain Pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. This is the Lamy Safari Fountain Pen. This pen is very well known. It's very popular with new fountain pen users, and it's a, a very good fountain pen for the price, which is around $30. Now, it was originally released in 1980 as a children's pen, and I'll kind of talk about that a little bit more as to why this would be considered a, a children's pen. This model also is probably the most collectible series in all of Lummy's history. There are people that collect all of the different generations of this pen, there's limited editions. They do, I think, a yearly one now, or it used to be less frequent than that. But I've seen collections where they have, you know, five red safaris, and they're all different. And it's an interesting thing to collect. These pens are not particularly expensive. Some of the earlier ones and the rarer ones can sell, I think, for in the 100 to $200 range. Let me know if there's a thousand dollar Lummy Safari or something like that. I'd be curious to see what that is. Let's walk through the pen. So you have a stainless steel clip up here, kind of looks like a paper clip. Um, when you put this down on the desk with the clip side down, it, the pen will sit on the clip only. Uh, so the body is raised off of the desk. The body is all ABS plastic. We have the Lummy logo here. There's an ink window here, which is kind of recessed. It's not exactly a window, it's really more of a hole because what I'm touching here is actually the, the converter. It's not like, you know, there's a piece of plastic over here. Now on top we have a black finial with this X pattern. Lamy seems to change this up uh, somewhat. I think most of the pens now have this black finial. I've seen ones where this matches the color of the body. And I've also seen uh, ones that just are the color of the body with a little hole in the middle, no X. But I think for the most part, this is the finial that you get now in 2020. Uh, on the back here, let's see if we're going to be able to see this. You can see it says uh, Germany, and there's a little cutout here. And this is actually a good way to see the shape of the pen body. You have these two flat parts here and these two round parts up here. So let's take the cap off. It's a snap cap. There's a little gasket here. Here we have the tripod, what's called the tripod grip. There are these two flat sections, and then we have a rounded bottom of the section. The grip on this pen I find to be pretty comfortable, and I think most people will find the grip section comfortable, but it does kind of force the position of your hand or your fingers, so it is worth trying it before you buy it, or you can buy it from somewhere you can return it. It's possible that because it sort of forces the position, it won't work for you. Now, just kind of as a comparison here, this Omas 360 has a triangle grip also. But I find that this pen is much less friendly. This should work for most people. This one is, I think, really iffy. The grip is partly what makes this a pen designed for children. It's helping them get their grip down. And then of course it comes in these bright plastic colors. It's all ABS plastic. And it, you know, this is a pen that doesn't feel particularly heavy. It kind of has a toy-like feel to it. So you can kind of get the sense of a children's pen. It's durable, it's light, and it's also pretty big. Just as a comparison for size, you know, this is a, a Parker Duofold Centennial. This is you know, the biggest size that they make for what was uh, Parker's top of the line pen. And you can see this is quite a long pen. It posts nicely onto the back here. Good secure posting. I really like that. You got the grip. You have the um, standard stainless steel Safari or uh, Lamy nib. This is a fine. And again, these just pull straight off of the feed. So you can kind of just see a little track there where the feed folds or where the nib folds over on the feed you just can pull it straight off carefully so it's very easy to change the nibs on these and we unscrew the body and here we have a the z28 converter 
And this pen does not come with a converter. You have to buy this extra. These are $5, but it does come with a, a Lummi T10 cartridge, and it is a proprietary cartridge converter. And again, when you're buying a Lummi converter for the Safari, you can actually use the Z27 or Z28. I recommend getting the Z28 for this pen unless you have multiple Lummi pens and you just want one converter. So basically the thing that makes this only compatible with these Safari style pens that would include like the Vista and the AL Star. This converter has a little dot and it sits into this little slot here which the other Lummi pens do not have. So that's the converter. Let's do some measurements. So in terms of length we're looking at right about 14 centimeters even, uncapped. Looking at, looks like 13 to me. 13 centimeters and posted. That looks right about 16 and a half to me. In terms of the width, this is a little bit of a weird one to try to measure like this. So looking at about 10.9 millimeters, or 11.1 at probably the widest point. Because it's a triangle, it's a little bit wonky to measure. Let's do the weight. So 17.56 grams, that's with the converter and some ink in there. That's quite a light pen. Uh, it's not particularly heavy. Yeah, again, quite light. Uncapped, 10.24 grams. It's a plastic pen and, and you pretty much, you know it. There isn't much in terms of flexibility in the material, so it's not flimsy, but it's also just, it doesn't feel luxurious. So that's the Lamy Safari. I think this is quite a good starter pen. Let's do the Lummi Safari writing test. This is a fine, and this is Lummi Red Ink. Fast writing. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it's a very reliable performer. Not tried reverse writing. Reverse writing with this pen because of the quote unquote tripod grip. This feels, without even putting the pen to the paper, feels not very good. But looking like it can do it, um, yeah, I wouldn't. It's not comfortable, but it can do reverse writing. In terms of flexibility, I, you know, I did the Lummi accent review with the gold nib. I'll put a link up in the corner for that review. But even though that nib was pretty flexible, the feeds on these pens are not really able to put up with any kind of flex. And this is pretty, you can get just a touch of variation, but it's basically a nail. Yeah, not really gonna get any uh, variation there. But this is also quite a wide fine. That's 0.8 millimeters. It's pretty, I mean, I would, feel more like this is a medium. This is a uh, Waterman uh, Edson medium and it's noticeably thinner actually than the fine. Um, what else do I have? It's a medium here. This is a Omas 360 Vision, also a medium. Um, again, thinner. So yeah, this is a pretty fat nib. This is a very nice writing pen. It's smooth. It's reliable. I don't really have any complaints other than I would say this fine writes more like a medium. And I mean, yeah, the Waterman and the Omas medium were actually look to be thinner than the Lummi fine here. So what are my pros and cons for the Lummi Safari fountain pen? Well, there's a lot to like here. And I mean, there's a reason this is such a popular pen. I think it's a very fun pen. It comes in a lot of fun colors. It has a nice large size. I think this tripod grip is very comfortable for a lot of people. And, you know, it's a very affordable 
pen and I think it really is kind of a, a design icon. I also think that in terms of fountain pen collecting, this is one of the more affordable fountain pens to collect. They you know, are only about $30 uh, retail and they come out with limited edition models and an expensive rare Lummi Safari is something like a hundred or two hundred dollars which is a lot for a pen that retails for thirty dollars but in the world of pens having a very desirable model in a series two or three hundred dollars isn't actually that much money so if you wanted a series of fountain pens to collect I think this is one of the most affordable ones and there are a lot of people that like these. Cons, you know, it's ABS plastic and it feels like ABS plastic. A similarly priced pen, or even it's cheaper than this actually, is the Pilot Metropolitan, which has a metal body. It feels much more luxurious than this. Of course, you can get this pen in metal if, with the AL Star version, which is aluminum, but the plastic feels, I think, more plasticky than most other plastic fountain pens. And I think that's really the biggest downside for me. You do have a proprietary cartridge converter system, so that is kind of, can be kind of a bummer, but the cartridges are big and they do come in a good number of colors. So those are my pros and cons for the Lummi Safari. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button, and if you like this video, please hit that like button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.